to the Freedom from the Struggle podcast. Here are your hosts, Anthony and Melissa. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Freedom from the Struggle podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. Hello, welcome back. I'm Melissa. Well, Melissa, I would have to say that um, we've been doing this podcast for a little while now. We're Mm -hmm. in the middle, uh, well, actually towards the (laughs) end of season three. Three. And this letter that we are going to read today, I would say by far is the most um, crazy, outlandish. Interesting, um, yeah. uh, I would say (laughs) uh, something that's hard to believe, except I actually spoke with this gentleman who wrote this letter. Mm -hmm. and. After speaking with him, it's easy to see that there's uh, something very, very, very scary going on in his house. So yeah. uh, tonight's episode, we're in season three, episode 18, and uh, we're going to read a letter from a man named Mark that I think is going to get, grab your attention. So if you're tuning in for the first time or for a long time, this is definitely mm-hmm. one you want to stick around for. But before yeah. we get to that, we just have a couple of quick announcements. Okay, we just want to remind each and every one of you that we love to interact with you on the socials. A lot of you have uh, sent us DMs and reach out to us, kind of, uh, you know, uh, correspond with with us that way. But, Mm -hmm. you know, as we continue to push out posts and stuff, we'd love the interaction. It it not only just kind of helps us know who you are and who's out there, but it also helps to grow the channel indirectly because a lot of people, when they hear about the podcast, will go to the socials and look what we're about, Yeah, (laughs) that type of thing. So we'd love Mm -hmm. for you to join us on there and please go to the show notes. You could find, uh, we're pretty much on almost everything I would say. So you could find us there, Freedom From The Struggle podcast, uh, FFTS podcast. Um, depending on where you're looking and you'll find us there. We'd love to have you there. Don't forget to check out the struggle series podcast, which is our second kind of arm of this podcast where we simply just read through narratively the first three books in the struggle series entitled Mm -hmm. the struggle, the sacrifice and the return. We're right in the middle of the return. Uh, and that book is actually not even finished at the publisher. So you guys get a very good sneak peek of that, uh, by going to that podcast every week is a chapter. And so mm-hmm. we're pretty much through the middle of the of the last book. So if you wanted to, you can go back and start at the very beginning with the struggle and then the sacrifice and then the return. But I also wrote those books to where if you picked up on the third one, you'd still know what was going on. <laughs> yeah, I uh, did that for a reason, very because good. a lot of times people won't find us until a, a later edition in the series. So. Mm-hmm. And then uh, last but not least, if you're interested in more content, we definitely have a Patreon campaign at the $2 level. You could get in there and get your episodes a day early as uh, well as uh, access to the entire back catalog. And then at the $5 level, you get access to uh, the two bonus episodes per month, Mm -hmm. as well as you get all three of the of the uh, books in the struggle series in their entirety on that uh, platform. So you don't have to wait every week for a chapter. You could simply find all three completely recorded and ready for you to listen to. Mm -hmm. Um, I I also want to take the time just to send out our thoughts and prayers to all the people who have struggled with the natural disasters. As you know, if you've been listening, uh, my daughter and her husband uh, were in North Carolina. And although they stayed dry, they definitely were drastically impacted by the floods Mm -hmm. and the weather there from uh, Hurricane Helene. And then we're also sending shout outs to Tennessee and Georgia and Florida, as well as North Carolina. And then Florida just got hit again with this latest hurricane. And although they were very prepared for it, there were still millions of people without power. And I think they're still getting a lot of those people back online. But, you know, when people lose their homes and their livelihoods and their, you know, just way of life, whether it's for two weeks or Or for months, yeah. It's uh, it's tragic. And so we just send our thoughts and prayers to all of you um, out there. It's just something near and dear to my heart because of uh, getting the phone calls from my daughter and just them wondering where they're going to get food and their food in their fridge spoiled and and, uh, you know, just trying to have to go out on daily journeys to see if anybody stocked anything up and get gathering what they can have no ability to cook their food. And so fortunately, they're ready now. If there ever to be another one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now. Generator, backup food. Yeah, Most definitely have to think about that stuff maybe next year yeah. when people get themselves together. For sure. Tornado. 
season comes every year. So yeah, so have some dry food and canned goods and all that good stuff. Yep, for, for sure. So yes, even the dog uh, is barking because he's agreeing with our prayers and thoughts. So <laughs> not sure if you guys can hear that. He's having a dream right under our feet here. So, uh, but um, what we want to do is yeah. just make sure that uh, all of you, if you, you know, in your daily prayer life, just remember those people that are still struggling. A lot of those people lost family members, everything, loved yeah. ones, lost everything. Mm -hmm. And so let's not forget them. Now, back to business here. Yeah, um, good story. I'm not going to lie to you listeners. <laughs> when I got this letter and first read it, my, my instinct or my thought was, man, if this is real, this is serious. And then my second thought was, is this just somebody writing in with some crazy story? Mm -hmm. And we suspend all disbelief here, but on the same token, we do kind of filter some stuff because we don't ever want to put anything on the air that is easily debunkable or just right. somebody who just wants to tell their paranormal story. And although we love to hear them, this podcast is designed to help people who are struggling, not just to tell stories. And so right. my, I read the podcast, I read the, the, the letter, the letter. We actually bumped something that was going to be on this podcast because I actually called and spoke to this gentleman. We originally corresponded via email mm -hmm. and then eventually got him to give up his number. Now we are only going to identify him as Mark. We're not going to give any identifying details because, um, he's a kind of a prominent person mm -hmm. in his community. Right. And so you, the embarrassment, the judgment, I mm -hmm. think is the biggest thing that he's worried about. So there's a couple of identifying factors in this letter that I'm going to leave out. But other than that, we're going to read it. Okay. Because when I spoke with him, I wanted to feel him out to see, is this just some dude who just wants to tell <laughs> his crazy story on the air? But when you hear the letter, there was something in it that told me, no, this exactly. guy, this yeah. guy, this is real. Mm -hmm. And this is something that this family is struggling with. So with, without, you know, going too far down that road, let's read the letter and then we'll spend some time working on what our thoughts are in this letter. So, okay. uh, he starts and I love, he kind of sounds like a guy that as I read the letter and Melissa, you can tell me I'm wrong after we read it. He almost sounds like he just threw this together. It isn't really kind of like concise. Mm -hmm. It's kind of goes here, there and everywhere. Cause he sounds very desperate. Exactly. And then when I spoke with him, cause I think the letter came through last night. Mm -hmm. And so I got with him today and his mood, if anything is more scrambled right. than less scrambled. So the family seems desperate mm -hmm. and very authentic. Uh, I did offer for him to do, again, an interview on the air, this would have been the perfect person for that. Yeah. But because of who he is, um, he's just not something he can consider. And more importantly, which I agree with, he doesn't care about that. Mm -hmm. He needs help. Yeah. So let's get to this. It says, Anthony and Melissa, hello, my name is Mark and I am in desperate need of help. I have a crazy situation going on in my house and I do not know where to turn. I told a friend about my situation and he referred me to the, uh, to the people he thought could help. So a paranormal team came to my house. I just threw them out. Um, and I'm not sure I didn't ask him what he meant by, I just threw them out. I don't know if he meant he like just a couple of days ago, or if he didn't deal with their stuff and just threw them out. That's what I'm thinking. Like, yeah. he's like, okay, this doesn't make any sense. So you guys yeah. can just leave. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and definitely what he said is he just told him <laughs> it's time for you to go. That was his exact words. Yeah. They were more worried about evidence in their own theories than mm -hmm. helping us. I, and we'll get to that. And in, in, as we kind of break down the letter later. So okay. I, I think we're in big trouble, especially my daughter. Let me start out by saying that I'm a Catholic and I've already reached out to the church. They are of no help. And again, that always breaks my heart when you reach out to clergy and they can't help you or don't try to help you. Mm -hmm. He said, this is kind of my funny favorite part, even though the letter is very serious. I have a friend who is an atheist that listened to your podcast and didn't like it. Of course, atheists never do. And neither do Christians for that matter. But however, when he saw some things here that he could not explain, he asked me to consider reaching out to you. Um, oh, so he saw something too. Yeah. So, and we'll get to that 
Okay. Because yeah, I'll, I'll explain a little bit of I what, that sentence, what he I told me. <laughs> Melissa was walking the dogs when I <laughs> spoke with Mark. So okay. I've listened to a couple of episodes and you seem like you have an open mind. So I'm going to put it out there because I'm lost and don't know where to turn. Here it goes. About six months ago, we had what I would call an alien contact at my house. I know that sounds crazy, but I don't have the ability to try and look normal anymore. All I can say is that I desperately need you to believe me. And Mark, we do. I know you're going to be listening. Mm -hmm. uh, we do believe you. I, I was very honest and said I wasn't sure to believe you at first, but once I spoke with you, I believe you. Here's what happened, he says. We were asleep and my wife was startled awake by a noise that sounded like a hum. She woke me up and I could hear it. I got up and looked out the window. I could see a light that was shining into my daughter's room. I'm not going to lie to you. My first thought was that it was some pervert using a drone to spy on my daughter, which mm -hmm. makes sense to me if mm -hmm. I visualize that in my head. He goes on to say, I was livid. I live in rural and I'm going to leave out the state, um, even though it might not identify him. Let's just be sure. So he lives in a rural area and I'm not afraid to use a shotgun. <laughs> I grabbed it and went into my daughter's room, ready to shoot the drone out the window. Once I was sure that the drone saw that I noticed it. So if you don't track what he's saying there, he's saying that he wanted the, whoever was operating the drone to see that the dad walked in the room with a shotgun before he <laughs> literally was going to shoot, shoot it, it through the window. Yeah, I would have to. Um, so that person knows that they were noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, I screamed for my wife to keep an eye on it from out uh, from out of, I guess their bedroom window. Mm -hmm. I went into my daughter's room and I froze. I'm not going to lie. I have never been that scared in my life. I saw what looked like one of those alien gray creatures standing in the room. You're going to think I'm lying. And you notice how he keeps saying, you're going to think I'm lying. Mm -hmm. I need you to believe me. So he is desperate for somebody to believe him. And he knows that what he's saying sounds crazy. Yeah. So he says, uh, you're going to think I'm lying, but I think I caught it off guard. It sort of jumped and made a quick move toward the window. Then it turned into a ball of light and went out the window that was not open. Yes, it went right through the glass. I was frozen in place. I could not take my eye off the bright light that was shining in. Finally, my daughter's scream snapped me out of it. My wife came in and we just sat there in shock. If my daughter, who was 11, was not there to verify that I saw it, I probably wouldn't have said anything. Who would believe me? Here's the crazy part. My wife saw the ball of light go back into the other brighter light, and then the thing took off at supernatural speed. We just sat on my daughter's bed and held her. This is where it gets desperate. She said that she has seen this creature before and that it has asked her to go with it. She said that she has always said no, but that it seems like it's getting mad at her for not going. And that is very serious. And we'll mm -hmm. get to that in a second. We of course brought her into our bedroom and that is where she has slept every day since. Now keep in mind, he said about six months, months ago. ago. <laughs> so this little girl has been sleeping in their room for six months. Wow. We have not seen the creature again, but we now have a ton of paranormal activity in our home. We hear voices talking at night just outside our door. My daughter says that she thinks that the creature talks to her in her head, and that's even more serious. We're afraid that she's going to be taken or possessed or whatever. Oh, no. I'm not sure if I think this is a demon or an alien, but either way, it is after our daughter. Can you please help us? You could reach out to me at Mark, you know, and there's his email address. I don't mind if you don't use my story on the podcast. Can you please just reach out to me ASAP? Mm -hmm. Thank you in advance for your help. We're sorry for the urgent message. We just don't know where else to go. And then he signs it, Mark. Yeah. So again, like I always do, Melissa, Give us your thoughts on that. That's crazy. <laughs> that is a crazy story. That is crazy. Um, well, I'm glad he did reach out to us. I guess maybe my first thought is 
or maybe you can help me figure this out. Like, do you think something happened in their family, like recently in the last six months to make, well, no, the, because the daughter said it's been coming to her room for a while. So I'm just wondering if something happened to make, um, if there's any familiar demons in the family, the sticking his ugly head up or, well, she's only 11. So hopefully, hopefully she doesn't have any friends at school playing with Ouija boards or anything like that. But I most definitely, it sounds scary. I would have been totally frozen as well. If you see some light or something, I think we saw one, one time when we were out uh, looking at model homes and I asked you, did you see that? It made the hair on my arm stand up, but it didn't scare me. But to see the creature in her room, I was thinking it was only in the light. I didn't realize that it was standing in the room. And now I'm interested about what did his friend see and then recommended him to reach out to us and like what other activities are going on in the house is things like, well, hearing voices outside of the door and if the daughter is hearing something in her head could it be a medical issue with the daughter but if all all of them are hearing it well, not it. just in seeing it so it's just not here okay so you can scratch that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we're, a demon, I mean, like i you, um, you can look at all the angles yeah <laughs> it's a crazy story yeah all but, right well Let's i i spoke with it. mark and unfortunately he He's kind of a, an important type person. He has a kind of a, you know, big job, I guess, you know, not that all jobs aren't important, but, you right. know, definitely somebody who has a lot of responsibilities. And so mm -hmm. he was getting ready to go into a big meeting. He actually stepped out before the meeting started to take a quick call with me uh, because he didn't want to not talk to me. Right. Um, uh, Cause he was emailing me on his phone. And then I said, I need, you know, I want to talk to you even if it's for a few minutes. So he actually stepped out and said, Hey, I got about three minutes for, mm -hmm. and we ended up talking for about 10, okay. but, um, <laughs> but he, um, Aww. he did share with me some information. And so what he, what he said was that the, the being would, would basically be what would be considered a gray alien, short, big head, big eyes, uh, kind of a skinny body. So he said, it wasn't exactly like the pictures mm -hmm. uh, because he said the being looked maybe a little more greenish than gray because there was a bright light that was coming into the window. So if you're, if you're a listener, right. picture your bedroom and then all of a sudden a bright light, light is like shining in it in the middle of the night. And especially if your blinds aren't closed and your curtains aren't closed. Mm -hmm. So it would, you know, it would brighten up the room. So it's, it's pretty you know, I'm pretty confident as I was talking to him that the color mattered because he could clearly see, you know, if somebody said it was, it was really dark, but I think it was grayish green. That's different than there's a bright light shining, shining into in. the room. Yeah. He said, and it kind of looked like maybe it had like little, whole, like little scales on its back, almost like a little dinosaur. You know, they have like the little oh, ridges, ridges, like an alligator I picture in my head. Mm -hmm. So, but it looks similar to a gray alien in the face, I guess. Um, um, and so he said, you know, I didn't go in expecting anything paranormal. Right. I went in expecting to, you know, make my, make a show, shoot the drone out of the sky, get it, figure out if we can find out who, who, who it belongs to and have them busted. Mm -hmm. Um, that was his goal. And when he saw this thing, it completely changed his whole demeanor. And, uh, you know, he said he's, uh, you know, he, as he explained, he's kind of a country, country boy type guy. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, I was frozen. I, because what do you do? Right. You know, really? and, uh, you know, and I'm sure when I speak to him again, I'll get more detail on that. But he said the thing basically took care of itself by leaving because he's, you know, he was frozen. He was, you know, hoping probably that he would have the wherewithal to shoot the thing. Right. But he couldn't, um, he couldn't muster it up just, uh, just, um, you know, like naturally, 
yeah you know like a, a, like a like you know if it would have been a dog or werewolf or anything probably else he probably would have just shot just, it yeah but when it's an alien and you're and you're probably somebody who doesn't believe what she told me i never believed in aliens and as a matter of fact he told me that his buddy who didn't like the podcast listened <laughs> to the stuff about aliens mm -hmm. which coincidentally god works in crazy, crazy ways. ways yeah so his buddy listened to something about aliens didn't like our belief system and so you know that they none of them believed in aliens but now he does or at least something right so mm -hmm. he also said that since that time they have all of the typical haunting things doors open and close right in front of them oh. stuff flies off the off the stuff when they're cooking dinner as a family it's just a it's just a husband and wife and a daughter there's no other kids they have two dogs that are afraid to go into rooms at certain times they have oh, no. uh, they have dogs that stare out the window and bark when there's nothing out in the yard they do have big floodlights this was an interesting to me because it wasn't in the letter they have big floodlights that come on when uh things are moving like in the yard lights. Yeah. but they can't remember the floodlights being on when this thing was shining in the window which it should have drawn attention to them because when the thing took off and the wife couldn't see it anymore the floodlights weren't on the backyard was black again mm -hmm. like pitch black oh. so the floodlights were not on so he considers this to be some sort of weird type you know craft or whatever he said he couldn't tell if the thing was two feet long or 20 feet long because the light was so bright mm -hmm. that you couldn't make out how big the actual craft was, but it was a very focused beam, which is why they thought it was a drone with the light. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a light that was 20 feet in diameter. The light was smaller, but it was just so bright that it blocked out everything. Like if, like looking into a bright light, you couldn't tell if there was 20 people shining the light, light on, on you, you or one, one. Mm -hmm. kind of that type of thing. And you know, even from the side, because I guess the bedrooms are I'm in my mind that he didn't say this, but they're kind of right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you walk out of their bedroom, so they're looking out the window, but the bright light still kept them from seeing this craft or whatever it was, could have been not. So a do craft. you know if the daughter said that she has seen it or is it just yeah, it's so, been telling so, her no the daughter has seen this thing a lot for a while it's been coming to her so oh, so okay. and, and again i'm doing it because we didn't talk every detail but it's been coming to her telling her to come with me and so that's why he saw it in the room yeah so when he busted that's in the why room he started he startled him he startled it because it had come into the room to go over to the bed to talk to, to, her, to her and then it sees him and, took and then off. takes off um, so, uh, I don't know if it was 10 times or 20 times, but he, you know, if from she, the letter, okay, yeah. you know, it, it, it had come to her often and was starting to get mad. So mm -hmm. that doesn't sound like it was two times. It's probably been a constant thing. And right. so, oh gosh. so he says the, the main thing that is creepy is, is that when they're in the bedroom at night with the door locked, so they, he said, it's one of those things to where we try not to go to the bathroom at night. And if we do, we go together. So this is a grown country man oh with his gosh. wife and they all go to the bathroom together. And more importantly, he says, you could hear them outside the door talking, whatever they are. And so he goes, it's not a, um, um, it's not a, like a, um, uh, little whisper voice it's like a conversation that they can't dissect mm -hmm. so maybe a different language but it's loud and it's more than one so when they hear those noises they won't go outside the doors so it gets dark they go to bed at night lock the door and that's it um so that's wow. crazy and so the friend because that was my question mm -hmm. the friend when he came over uh, he decided that he was going to sit in the living room and be his own paranormal investigator. And what he said was that as he was sitting on the chair, a wide awake, something came up behind his ear and said, time for you to go as loud as can be. And when he turned around, there was nobody there. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. That makes sense. Wow. 
and I'm sure he left. Yeah. And said, so what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like what's, what's pro- process that with me because you and I are making eye contact right now and you're, you're verbally processing. So I'm going to give you some space here. What do you think? I think it's a demon that is, like you said, after the daughter and it is being not shy about letting the family, the dad and the mom, especially for the dad to see it. And then for them to just to terrify them and then to scare their friend or either talk to their friend. Like, like it's time, time for, for you, you to, to go. go. So even though he doesn't believe, I don't want to say believe in <laughs> well, anything, but well, you know, he doesn't he does believe. now. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And so, wow, that must have scared the heebie jeebies out of him as well. But I don't know. This is a hard one to like process. I don't want to say anything wrong or say anything crazy or stupid. <laughs> I just, I don't know what to say. Like well, I, what it comes down to, I think, Melissa, for you. Um, and is it becoming very bold to show itself finally after it? Well, it hasn't is, shown itself to anybody but the daughter, except for this one time where he surprised it. Mm-hmm. Now they hear it, but the friend didn't see it. He just heard a voice say, it's time for you to go. Sounded like it was right behind his ear. Right. So. Okay. So this is, this is a beautiful <laughs> way for us to break down this concept because for you and maybe for a lot of (laughs) listeners who haven't solidified what we think these angels are, Mm -hmm. I mean, these, uh, aliens are, um, in my belief system. And I'm, and I, and I told Mark this and that I told him when we pray for him today, Mm -hmm. that this is the Avenue we're going to take Okay. in my belief system. And I will fight you in the street for it is that these are demons. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, now every ancient alien person, every alien person, every military person who has seen crafts and people that say they worked at secret underground programs and stuff mm-hmm. are going to want to want to argue with me. But your argument still doesn't explain what my argument does. Right. If you took out his view of the bright light and uh, seeing the little creature, you would have said, this is demonic. Right. Mm -hmm. He's hearing voices. There's stuff flying off the counter. It's not a ghost or, or or it's a ghost or an alien. Mm -hmm. I mean, a ghost or a, or demon. You wouldn't have said alien, but because this stuff has been put in our collective conscience, that if you see one of these little gray things, and that's from outer space and a light and a craft that was hovering, we instantly say alien. But the little girl from what she remembers, because this was my biggest question, has she been abducted? And the answer to that is to her recollection, no. But it sounds to me like the demon is trying to get permission from her. So remember a handful of episodes ago, we Mm -hmm. talked about that age of innocence Innocence. where you go from you are innocent and if you died, you're going to go right to heaven And then you get to a certain age where you know right from wrong and you start choosing wrong. And that's where the need to to receive Jesus and and find your salvation there. Mm -hmm. She's right on the cusp of that. Oh, yeah. And so the alien is probably working in a coming to her at this age. When a demon is messing with the five-year-old, it's simply trying to plant seeds and torment a little human. Right. But when a demon is coming like this to an 11-year-old who's kind of making their own mind up about, you know, what they believe choices, and, yeah, and their things. choices and being mm-hmm. accountable for them, both literally and spiritually, they, this is the ripe age for that. So the demon can't take her because she is probably still on the, on the good side of that age of innocence. But if she says, yes, then she's, I'll go with you. Yeah. Then and she's then, opening. And that then up. she would probably experience what so many people on the planet consider an alien abduction and here's where i differ from a lot of christians and again Mm -hmm. i don't try to be other christians because other christians don't really have answers because they don't think about this stuff they've been they haven't had enough uh proper teaching from the pulpit or done their own studies they just 
kind of believe that, well, if the Bible doesn't say it, it isn't true. Well, the Bible doesn't say a lot of things. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't tell us how to use a computer because there was no computers when the Bible was written. Right. So, you know, what, what do you mean the Bible doesn't say it? Well, how do you use a computer? You have to use the principles within the Bible mm -hmm. to tell you how to properly use a computer and what to do and what not to do. Right. Right. Well, the same thing would apply here. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when people don't stop and think about, does the Bible talk about aliens and demons? Yes. In, in so many ways, mm -hmm. the Bible talks about these, these, alien angel visitors that came down from heaven and had sex with women and had these giant Nephilim beings. That's an alien encounter, right? Mm -hmm. These people were chilling back in the <laughs> days, you know, they got off, they, they, they got off to this start in the garden. They were kicked out of the garden. They started making cities and planting, planting crops and mm -hmm. harvesting, you know, livestock and just living their lives. And all of a sudden on this mountain, comes these alien beings out of the sky saying, I want you to be my wife. I want you to be my wife. The same thing would happen with us. If we saw an alien come down, did these people and you know, that, that we read about in Genesis chapter six, did they come down in a ship or did they just come out of the out sky? Of the sky. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh, like one of the Avengers or whatever, <laughs> <Right>. like, <laughs> you, you know, just, you know, land, like Thor <laughs> flung from the, from the, from the, you know, the, the heavens and just uh -huh. landed with a thud on the ground. We don't know. Yeah. But the Bible clearly talks about it. And so we also have this disbelief that, that these demons in their spiritual bodies that, you know, kind of live in the second heaven, which is outer space. Why do we believe they couldn't have technology? Why do we believe that the Bible talks about mm -hmm. this guy named Elijah being sucked up in a chariot of fire and taken to heaven. He, Elijah never died. He was doing God's work. God sent this chariot of fire to take him into the heavens. That's technology. That's mm -hmm. not demonic technology. That's godly technology. Right now, people would argue, was it really a chariot? Was it just a bunch of fiery angels that the people couldn't describe it in adequate terms. So they just kind of said it, look, we don't know, but it, it's technology in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And what we think is an alien craft may be something else right. because do you have a clear picture of an alien craft? No, <laughs> if you did, you'd be the most famous person on the planet. We have grainy pictures and some military people. We have, there's one famous video where you can pretty much see this craft pretty well. And when they zoom in, you can see like an alien, alien. creature in there. But, you know, I don't know if that's fake or real. I, oh. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I haven't analyzed the picture myself and I wouldn't know what I was looking for. I'm, I'm not a photographer or whatever, but, right. but we believe these things don't have technology. And so mm -hmm. if this thing could pass through a window, that's a spirit being, that's not a flesh and blood, right. um, uh, you know, thing made of matter in mm -hmm. the, you know, because you try to go through the window. You're going to have shards of glass in you as you <laughs> fall to the ground out of the window, right? But this thing was able to do it. So there's something supernatural or spiritual in nature. Yeah. And so these things are demons. Mm -hmm. And it, a demon is, it, it's doing everything a demon would do to an 11-year-old that it's trying to lure. Now, you asked something interesting. You said, well, what was going on with the family six months ago or whatever? That is something that we'll have to talk to Mark about. Uh, we're going to pray about that today, but I'm going to reach out to him, like I said, uh, either later tonight or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're recording this, you know, a couple of days before the podcast airs. So, um, you know, we might have an update even on next episode just to kind of give some more context yeah. to this. Cause the story I'm is so, yeah. I, I mean, I've been watching paranormal programs for a long time. If this dude, if this dude were to, he could go on any paranormal show on planet earth right now, they would take this story in a heartbeat mm -hmm. and he chose us, which this little tiny podcast that means he wants help he's not trying to get the notoriety exactly, but yeah. the story is crazy mm -hmm. so what what i'm saying is is he is somebody who i think believes they're demons because he says in the letter mm -hmm. i don't know if they're angels or, or demons, demons or what yeah. but um it, what he told me on the phone was this is evil i feel the evil now if it's an alien they're evil if they're demons they're evil I think they're one in the same and they're evil. Right. 
because any you know uh, malevolent kind of happy uh, alien creatures wouldn't be coming in the middle of the night to lure your daughter away. Yeah, that's uh, that's creepy. And mm -hmm. so they would because they would just take her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or they would come to the family and say, "Hey, we're the aliens you guys have been talking about since 1947 when the when the Roswell crash <laughs> happens, and we're good people, and can we take your daughter on a little trip?" You know, mm -hmm. we promise we'll bring her back, you know. And she's saying that they're getting mad so getting she can feel out. that yeah, the, the anger yeah. that she's getting from them. So again, from back, it. back to the path. So many people, the reason I went on that whole tangent is because so many people, Christian wise, won't give these people the benefit of the doubt when they say they've been abducted. Mm -hmm. But I am somebody who believes that a lot of these people have. Some of them are making up stories. Some of them you know, want attention. So they copied a story they heard from somebody else that were abducted. But there are people that I believe have authentically been taken by a demon, whether that's to another realm, whether, whether that's to some, some other far off place that demons dwell that we don't know about mm -hmm. and things were done to them mm -hmm. uh, for the purposes of whatever malevolent, um, you know, right. demon, type behavior they're trying to do, whether it's the demon sex magic we're always talking about. Because if you think about it, you hear these abduction stories where they say, they took me, I was pregnant, then they took me back, they took the fetus. You know, and you and mm -hmm. you hear a story like that, and most people would go, crazy lady, right. in a trailer <laughs> somewhere in the middle of the desert, you know, her mind's playing tricks on her, she's had a bad dream, or she's loony. But is that how a Bigfoot's made? Right. Is that how these, you know, cryptid creatures are made? Mm -hmm. Is that how, um, you know, they're, they're building some sort of army of these hybrid creatures mm -hmm. like the Nephilim of old to, for the final battle of Armageddon. Yeah. You know, when you hear a story about this giant in Kandahar that all of these soldiers say they killed this humongous giant with red hair that was hiding in the caves of Kandahar during the Gulf War, mm -hmm. you know, this is told by soldiers. Why would they say this? Right. You know, yeah. is this one of those creatures that the demons are hiding in these caves? You see, you, you yeah. start to put two and two together. <laughs> so what do they want with this 11 year old? Well, it, nothing good. Mm -hmm. um, now let, let's kind of have some fun with this in the midst of this horrible situation. Christians listening right now are saying, well, he's not really a Christian. He's him and that Melissa are just into the paranormal and they're trying to spin Christianity with it. And non-Christian people are saying, it's an alien, stupid. Why do you always have to <laughs> add Jesus, Jesus to everything, right? <laughs> but your arguments in and of themselves don't take you anywhere. Right. Okay, so who are the aliens? Well, we don't know. Where do they come from? Well, outer space somewhere. We don't know. But we do know that there's zillions of galaxies and the odds of there not being other people. Okay, so they chose us, flew all the way over here. Your story starts to sound just as crazy as mine. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Christian, yeah. <laughs> well, there's not really aliens. Yes, there is. The Bible, your Bible tells you there's aliens plain as day. Mm -hmm. Like I said, did you ever Christians think of the story of Elijah being sucked up in a chariot of fire, taken to God, mm -hmm. I guess. We don't know where he went. We just know he was there one minute and he was gone. Same with Enoch. Mm -hmm. Enoch was on the earth and then he was no more. How did they take him? The Bible tells us in Revelation of these crazy um, beings with horns and all these things. And everybody says they're metaphorical. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know, we haven't seen them yet because that's the future. Coming. Yeah. That's coming. But we do know of many people mm -hmm. who have seen. How about the star of Bethlehem? How about this star that these magi followed? Mm -hmm. so they could find out where Jesus was going to be. Is that an alien craft? Yeah. By definition, it is. Mm -hmm. Do I believe that it had a little gray guy in there? No. <laughs> I believe that God, through some sort of uh, supernatural kind of process, made a star that wasn't there before and so appear bright. into the sky yeah. to lead these people that they had been told by Daniel centuries before there's going to be a Messiah born, be looking for him. And when you 
see this star in the sky because God told me there's going to be a sign in the sky. All these gifts that I have prepared for this Messiah, this gold and frankincense and myrrh, Mm -hmm. you're going to take it to him. You're going to travel on a big journey. So that star wasn't in the sky for a day. It's not like they got on an airplane and went from where (laughs) they were to Bethlehem. Yeah. It's not like they got in a car. Mm -hmm. They got on donkeys and, and camels. I don't know. Walking and and went a long distance. So that star was in the sky for a long time that took them there Mm -hmm. with the gifts that Daniel had prepared for them when he was in that land. Yeah. So think about that. Like, yeah, that's a supernatural kind of technological, astronomical, astronomical kind of uh, technology that we don't understand that a a bright light could be in the sky for months. Mm hmm to get people to where they need to be. We don't read the Bible like that is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. We read the Bible like, well, it's about Jesus. There's some supernatural stuff. We're not meant to know it. We just need to know Jesus loves us. Follow him. Do good things. Don't do bad. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We don't stop and go. God gave us a lot of information. Yeah. And now in today's day and age, it's important that we know this. Mm -hmm. It wasn't 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. 50 years ago, we had different problems, different things. Should we have been learning this stuff? Probably, but it wasn't in the forefront. Now it is because there's so many cameras. There's so much paranormal activity being recorded. Even the Catholic church has increased the amount of exorcists that they have on staff because these things are happening all the time. Mm -hmm. So let's get down to business because we can ramble on this. We have been for about 30 minutes after (laughs) we read the letter. This is a demon, Mark. And I'm not going to beat around the bush because I think this is very serious. And I don't think you would have reached out to us if you didn't also know it was serious. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's an alien. And you ask me that question um, in front of my face, which you didn't. But if you ask me in front of my face, I would tell you like I tell everybody else. Um, You know, it's an alien. It's a demon. It's an alien. It's a demon. How do I know, or why do I believe that it, that it's a demon? Because many people, and you can do your own Google searches when they called on the name of Jesus in the midst of these abductions, the Mm -hmm. demon, the angels, I mean, the aliens went away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If these were angels or these were non harmful creatures, the name of Jesus wouldn't scare them. As a matter of fact, if there was no Jesus, (laughs) It wouldn't Uh scare them. Why did these beings flee or literally disappear Mm -hmm. when people cried out, help me, Jesus, Mm -hmm. because they're demons, Mark. And this demon is after your child and probably after your family. Mm -hmm. The question that Melissa asked you and I didn't get to cover, but I think that's a very good thing that you're going to have to keep working on. What was going on in your family that opened some doors to these things? Now that isn't a dig. Right. It doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that we're judging you. And it also doesn't mean that it's really a lot of nothing. Maybe it's just they've, they have, maybe God has big plans for your daughter and these demons know that and they're trying to get her early. Mm -hmm. You know, it it could be a lot of things, but this is something you're going to have to visit within serious family discussions. And as we talk more, Mm -hmm. we can kind of go over that. But again, no judgment. I don't care if you told me, You know, that six months ago, me and my wife, you know, uh, were out hunting and shot a guy and we buried him and didn't tell nobody. Right. You know, I don't care. I'm not going to tell on you. I just need to know, you know, so we can help you so you can repent and do all those things. And if Mm -hmm. it's just something that your daughter maybe got into at school, you can't judge her for it. You have to love her through it and we have to renounce it. If it's simply demons that are targeting somebody who they feel is going to be effective for the kingdom down the road, then we're going to approach it that way. Mm -hmm. But there's going to have to be some honest conversations within your family. For those of you who are listening and are frustrated with me because I don't call something an alien that to you is clearly an alien, again, please give me the benefit of the doubt because I don't know of people who, who have had these true um, abduction experiences that, that, you know, or at least are credible that consider these things pleasant. Exactly. I was going to say they're all terrified and painful and yeah. invasive and all those ugly things. No being that is not evil 
will abduct you. That's like saying, oh, this guy abducting, abducted me, but I know he loved me, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody abducts you, they didn't love you <laughs> because he would just have asked you to go with him and you right. would have said yes, <laughs> right? So anybody who takes you against your will, will uh -huh. who is messing with you in your sleep, this yep. is a malevolent, evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, I made a comment a couple of weeks ago, or maybe, maybe last week, a couple of weeks ago, and I got a DM that said something like, uh, you know, criticizing me for being, you know, like, uh, I guess, you know, flippant about, you know, what the, you know, what demons are and what they're not and what they mean. And, you know, as if I don't understand what this is about, but it's, it's real simple. Evil is evil. And if something's trying to mess with you, it is got a bad intentions, mm -hmm. you know? And the, the, I think the comment I got was some, well, how do you know it's not an angel trying to get your attention? Well, angels will get your attention in a very much more subtle manner. Right. You know, and more importantly, what are the voices you're hearing telling you and that type of thing? And I don't, I don't really believe any different um, because there's just too many stories of people who have had demonic encounters that have prayed and now have nothing and they're happy. Mm -hmm. Their lives are better. Yeah. There's never a story where somebody, you know, had a shaman come and pray for them. Well, we haven't had any malevolent spirits, but your soul's still at unrest. Mm -hmm. When you pray to Jesus and you accept him and he helps you with this, your soul's in a different place. Right. Yep. Um, and your spirit is alive. It's new. The Bible says, you know, mm -hmm. the old is the old is gone. The new has come. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is brand new. And so that's what we're shooting for. Now, Mark, what we're going to do today is just pray with your family. And uh, you and I, when we talked, I said, I want you to gather them around the, the, the phone or wherever you listen to your podcast. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pray this together. Um, I didn't ask your daughter's name and I probably should have, but our conversation was very brief and very mm -hmm. rushed. And, um, if you're listening, um, this is terrifying yet. This is easily resolved if you understand who this Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And so I'm speaking to you, young lady, you, you are at an age where you can start to make your own decisions and you're starting to see life for what it is. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Mm -hmm. Jesus is real. He is alive. All of the other religions on the planet can take you to the grave of where their Messiah <laughs> mm -hmm. died. Buddha, Muhammad, you, you know, there's places traditionally where this is the burial place of this God, mm -hmm. not our God. There's a place you can go to in Jerusalem where you can see the tomb and it's open. There was no bones there. And so many people believe that, you know, the disciples made this story up. There's more evidence that Jesus was resurrected than most people would have evidence that they're alive. Right. Um, you know, Roman soldiers at the risk of their life had to go tell Pilate, we weren't asleep. And then all of a sudden we were asleep. We didn't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. We don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. When you're told you guard this tomb at your life, they basically went to their death sentence to tell them that they don't know what happened, but the grave is empty. And how do a bunch of ragtag disciples who fought all the time, how did they go mm -hmm. and subdue Roman soldiers, centurion soldiers, roll a huge stone that would have woken the dead out of the way and pull the body out and then when hit it where? Right. It doesn't make sense. And if you believe that it was Judas that died and they said it was Jesus and that was Judas's body. Well, then where did Judas's body go? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have all these arguments, but it's, it's not real. Jesus yeah. is, is alive. He died, went to hell, rose from the grave so that we can have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And whatever these things are, they, they don't want you to know that. So they mm -hmm. scare you. They feed off of your energy. Yeah. They take your negative emotions and use it as fuel when they want to destroy you. 
And unfortunately, at 11 years old, I wish you didn't have to know this, mm -hmm. but we all have to pick a side. We all have to say at one point of our life, who is Jesus and what am I going to do with him? Unfortunately, young lady, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to say, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to go his way. Don't let these ritualistic, uh, judicious, legalistic Christians tell you that you're going to have to be perfect. That is, yeah. that is the biggest lie. That lies from the devil as well. What God asks of you is to accept him and work on yourself with his help. Mm -hmm. And he's going to help you through highs and lows, <laughs> oh, sins, yeah. times of sin and times mm -hmm. of sainthood. Yep. He's going to help you make decisions and he's going to comfort you when you chose to make the opposite decision of what he was trying to tell you to do. Mm -hmm. But it's a relationship and that's what we're looking for. And once you have him in your life, these things have to flee at his name, not just at them knowing that you know him, mm -hmm. they hear his name and it freaks them out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray for this family, Melissa. And okay. Then we're going to just kind of, uh, you know, kind of wrap up for today. And then I would imagine in next week, we're going to have a kind of an update. So okay. for those of you listeners, um, if you're not into this prayer thing, um, I would ask you to stick around anyway, see mm -hmm. what you think about exactly. it. But more importantly, if you're not into that, um, that's fine. Come tune in next week and I'm sure we'll have a, an update to see what, what's going on with this family. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm sure some of you, even if you're not into this, Christian deliverance <laughs> thing, the story in and of itself is entertaining. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I know that um, most people in the world don't believe stuff like this because it's never happened to them, God. But when it does, it's terrifying because we now can see into the spirit realm. We can see the actual beings that are trying to harm us on a daily basis, an hourly basis, a weekly basis, whatever it is. Because they hate us because they hate you, God. And you created us in your image and they hate that. They hate that no matter how far away we drift from you, that you forgive us and they're unforgivable creatures because of their nature. But God, you chose to have favor on us in spite of how bad we treat you sometimes. And so God, I just pray for this family that whatever is plaguing them that you would help them to understand that all you want is for them to confess it to you and you'll take it from them. Uh, so I pray for Mark and his wife. I pray that you would help them to stay strong as a couple. And I pray that you would help this young lady, God, to know who you really are. God, we, we can't imagine in our head what an 11 year old can do to deserve this. Mm -hmm. And if you ask my humble opinion, she probably did nothing or nothing that we would consider worthy of this kind of evil in her life, God. And I know from experience that even at a younger age than this, that I endured this type of thing, but God, you work all things to good. And I believe God, that this family is going to turn to you. And this story is going to be one that they tell to people that won't believe them, but they'll believe the transformation in this family. So God, I just pray that you would reach out to this family right now in their time of need that you would reach out to them and touch them in a tangible, realistic way that they know you're real. Speak to them in their heart, speak to them in their minds, speak to them in their spirit. And God, we just pray that they would walk through this prayer with you. And as they're praying this prayer, God, we just pray that all evil would be held at bay. So Mark and your family, I just ask that you say this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe in you. I confess my sins to you, whatever they are. You know my heart and you know where I've been. Please forgive me. God, please protect me from this evil that is after me. Please come into my life and become my Lord and Savior. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord. Please help me in my time of need. I believe in you, Jesus. And it's in your name I pray. And demons, I know you hear the sound of my voice because you're attached to these people. 
You are no longer welcome here in the name of Jesus. Be gone, demons. Back to the abyss, demons, where you belong. You are no longer welcome to torment this family. All permissions have been revoked. You are not allowed to touch this little girl. You are not allowed to visit this little girl in the name of Jesus. This family now belongs to Jesus, and you are not welcome. Like Jesus himself said, out of the, her in the name of Jesus. Out of this little girl. If you're attached, get out. If you're hanging on the fringes, get out. This family is not yours. They belong to Jesus. Your permissions are revoked. Be gone in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bind you. You're gone. Jesus, we just ask that this family would have a healing that is miraculous, mm -hmm. that it is um, a story that can be told not for views and clicks, but a story that could be told that this family could speak of just how real you are. Mm -hmm. Heal this family, protect this family from evil. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Mark and your family, I just ask that, you know, as we talk um, in the future, which, you know, will be the past by the time people hear this, that you just, you know, be assured that it's that simple. And I know people say that it, it can't be that simple. It is. What makes it complicated is where we think there's something we can do. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do. Left to our own devices, demons <laughs> would squash us. Oh, yeah. It is as simple as accepting Jesus and letting him fight this fight mm -hmm. that he's already won. And so you're going to commit your lives to this Jesus guy, and it's going to be amazing. Um, you sound like a good Catholic family. Um, I'm not telling you to switch churches or anything like that. That is something that you and God will work on. There are plenty of good uh, Christ-following people within the Catholic Church, and there are a very bunch of fake people within the Protestant Church. It is nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you just could commit to that. Read that Bible. Uh, pray your tails off. And we are always here for you to reach out to. Forget this stupid podcast. Um, we love it. We try to help people. But this is not about that. We don't want you to keep reaching out to us, Mark, so we can keep getting more content. We want you to reach out to us if you have questions or if you just have a great, you know, happy ending to this story. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Not for just for you, but for all the listeners as well. So we're going to conclude with that. And um, like I said, to all you listeners who stuck around, you can go back and rewind this and say that prayer for yourself. If this mm -hmm. is something that you feel Jesus is calling you to do, mm -hmm. then rewind this if you didn't say it already. Yep. And it is that simple. Good it stuff. Really is that simple. That's uh how that's how we find our assurance. I'm the biggest <laughs> clown you'll ever meet. I've made mistakes that are so huge you can't wrap your head around it. And God can choose if he can choose to love somebody like me, he can love anybody. And that's the truth. And these demons love to get you um believing something else. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. So I actually believe this is going to be a happy ending. Yeah. Uh, me I too. believe you have some work to do, family. But I believe that the that the bulk of this will be something that, uh, you know, is resolved fairly quickly. It's just the residuals of closing all the doors that we're going to work on. So mm -hmm. what do you think, Melissa? Awesome. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to. Well, like you said, if he wants to reach out to us, hopefully I do have a feeling that this is going to clear everything up. But if, you know, anything else happens, you know, can reach out and, you know, you can give him some referrals or some help, you know, from the state that he lives in, like you've done with other viewers and things like that. So yep. like you said, we're not trying to spotlight anything. You yep. know, we do appreciate the letter and him reaching out. Yep. So. I do. I do actually have a uh, pastor friend of mine who's in rural, uh, whatever state he lives in, I almost said mm -hmm. it. Um, and I'm wondering if they're close that I can hook them up and get them, uh, get him to, uh, go visit my pastor friend. Yeah. Just um, to give him some, uh, some guidance, you, you know, know, hopefully it's within a good driving distance, but we'll see how that Cause he goes. went to the paranormal team, went to the church and yeah. now he's with us, but 
Yeah, unfortunately, this is one of those things to where, you know, paranormal teams a lot of times are so caught up in their own evidence gathering that they. That's why he threw them out. He felt like, yeah. like, no, this is garbage. So. And the church Thanks, sometimes Mark. is just yeah. as just as inept, if not more. Yeah. You know, you go to seminary, you go to all these trainings, but how many of them are actually teaching you how to do deliverance ministry? Very, very little. Yeah. And even, and, and, you know, even people that say they believe don't really believe until it happens to them. So Mm -hmm. if a priest would have gone to this house, I bet you they would have been become believers, but they wouldn't even go visit him. So that's pretty sad. But anyway, let's not ramble on. All right. Good stuff. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much for (laughs) listening to the freedom from the struggle podcast. Make sure that you uh, tune in every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for more stories like this. We just want to remind you that this content is copyright The Struggle LLC. And a big shout out, as always, to Todd Kazinka for the amazing voiceover work and the music that he put together to make our podcast sound a little better. (laughs) So thanks, everybody, for joining us. We pray that God blesses you and keeps you. uh, And we'll see you next time. You take care. Thank you for listening to the Freedom from the Struggle podcast. Make sure to subscribe, tell your friends, and we will see you next time.